Whoa, pretty scary, isn't it? But what if, instead, this creepy woman would stop and say, Hi, let me tell you a joke. Three ghosts go to a bar. The bartender shouts, spirits for everyone. Would this be a good joke? Would this be a good time to hear it? And how the heck would humor fit into such a game with heavy events and characters? It's obvious that the intention is not for the player to be amused. But there are games with intensely emotion-charged stories in which, despite this, you can find humor. Scarcely, but you'll find it. If the story is meant to be taken seriously, then what is its purpose in such an experience, since it's clearly not about a little giggle? Well, humor, from a psychological perspective, has been analyzed for quite some time, and its role in our lives has long been confirmed. I think this already established logic explains the use of jokes even in some of the most tense moments in video games. With its help, I believe we can better grasp when and how to effectively use the powerful weapon of humor, without being out of place or paltry. But before talking any psychology, let me show you four examples from games with not-so-funny stories to understand that by cleverly using a comic construction, a moment of respite can be inserted while avoiding turning the whole episode into a bad joke. In a gloomy world like that of The Last of Us, where zombies freely roam the streets, drollery is the last thing to be expected. However, the interaction between Joel, a hard-boiled smuggler, and Ellie, a mature beyond her years teenager, generates comic sparks. Light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. Whoa! How, how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Now, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Um. Ellie's presumed innocence, shaken by an inappropriate image, and her attempt to understand what she was looking at make Joel's reaction even more amusing. But that cunning little girl knows pretty well what all the fuss is about. Poor Joel. For a tough guy like him, it doesn't seem easy to explain a natural thing, especially since it's well above average, apparently. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye bye, dude! Holding someone at gunpoint is a tense situation, mostly for the threatened one. Red Dead Redemption 2 adds another tone to such an incident, resulting in a piece of dark humor. You got one minute. I'm counting. One, two, three. No. Uh, Milliken, uh, is it? Yes, sir. Will you count for me? I got talking to do. Uh, yes, sir. Of course, sir. <clears throat> From one or four? Oh, so? very funny. No, we must be at 11 by now. Arthur Morgan needs to prioritize. Negotiations come first, yet the hostage is not to be ignored either. But the victim can make themselves useful even if their counting skills are jumbled. Don't worry, Arthur is there to help. Mafia 2 gives us a nice example of a threefold joke. Although we seem to be dealing with different things, practically, it is a single jest divided into three fragments, with the last part neatly closing it. Get me to El Greco! The fucking painter? No, the fucking doctor, okay, you idiot! Take it easy, I'm gonna get you there in a minute. Look, just hang in there, pal. We'll be at El Greco's in a minute. I can smell the souvlaki from here. You El Greco the doctor? No, I'm the fucking painter. This whole layout is filled with wit and also turns Joe Barbaro into a paradoxical character. Who would expect a mafia brawn to associate the name El Greco correctly? And that bored sarcasm of the doctor. Clearly, it wasn't the first time he painted that way. In Alan Wake, once in a while you can hear some foggy guys saying strange one-liners, a kind of frightening warnings to the protagonist. Often, these pearls of wisdom seem to be random, and then you hear this. At first, it looks like a small sample of ludicrous humor inserted in the middle of a rather hectic episode. But even though they are chasing you with axes in their hands, those lads want nothing but the best for you. 
When the game plays as a sprinting simulator most of the time, you can't afford to neglect the health of your Tika. So go get those fatty acids. Duck the Zorda. So, can serious games take a joke? As you've just seen, yes, perfectly well, in fact. But you should be careful. Humor is a very special material. If used excessively or inadequately, not only does it not achieve its purpose, but could end up causing harm. In other words, even if you can use it, it doesn't mean you have to. So don't be fooled by my hand-picked examples. There are games with no room for humor. The subject is so dark, or the characters are so tragically designed, that even the most innocent knock-knock joke would be completely unfit. I tried to see if some of these games hid any traces of comic, regardless of form, and without any sadistic proness, I even tested if they could accommodate something amusing, no matter how light. Well, total failure. Good luck finding a speck of fun in Senua's hallucinations or a stand-up joke in Bioshock. Don't think that it gets better when you try to find Ethan Carter or Slaughter Colossi in the Forbidden Lands. And if you put your hopes in something like This War of Mine or Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, you can kiss those hopes goodbye. I did the same with mine. Understanding humor is very straightforward. See or hear something funny and laugh a splendid cause and effect relationship in its simplicity. Because a joke has a simple structure. To get the desired result, you only need to pay attention to a few details. Who is the funny one? You're a funny guy. <laughs> funny how? In what circumstance? Rules! In a knife fight? No rules! <laughs> and how the comical bit is delivered. But some guys, throwing away all this easiness, decided to analyze how humor is generated, how it is transmitted, and how it is perceived, and developed various theories about all these hows, whens, and whys. In our case, at least three of them are useful. To put it simply, the incongruity theory and benign violation theory are two concepts that fix the origin of humor in the differences between the expectations of the audience and what happens in reality. Both suggest that an attempt to reconcile those differences triggers a state of cognitive dissonance. The humorous part arises from trying to rationally resolve these inconsistencies. But the most interesting, perhaps, is the relief theory. What makes this one unique is its view on humor as a useful tool for releasing pressure in settings where laughter may only seem inappropriate, irrespective of any impulse considered humorous. In 1860, in The Physiology of Laughter, Herbert Spencer stated that humans are emotional springs that continuously store tension. This makes easily understandable why laughter, fed by nothing truly comic, can be set off by rather simple means to minimize stress in the player's mind. In our examples, the relief theory is used in full. The comical breather is a simple but clever setup, a thin splinter inserted between two episodes of intense action. Its role is to briefly pull the player out and give them a chance to regenerate their capacity to stock up tension. What enables them to endure another round of fighting for their life is such a short jolt of fun. For instance, in The Last of Us, not more than a couple of minutes before the sequence I showed you, Ellie and Joel weren't too far from being eaten by a horde of zombies, and not a minute later, they are ambushed by a group of bandits. There are, of course, other theories as well, about which you can learn from the links I left in the description of the video. But important to know is that humor, in serious or dramatic games, most often acts as a relieving tool. Though you need to be careful when and how you use this device. Think of it as a painkiller. If you take the right dose, you will feel better. And, as someone once said, a sense of humor is needed armor. And if you also take some omega-3 fatty acids, then you are good to go. If you enjoyed this essay, one of the best ways to help me is by sharing it on other social media, say Reddit or Twitter, where you should also follow me. And if you want to both support the show and receive lovely monthly content, join the Patreon page like these wonderful people. Bader Akhtani, 
Debashi Patra, Giovanni Pena, and Realitats Verlast. Thank you so much for watching.